Hello everyone, so my name is Vincent Dortel and today I would like to talk about game music restoration. And for that I'm going to give you uh, an overview of the process that I used when I had to restore the 97 tracks from Golden Sun 1 and 2 about a year ago as a personal project. So if you've never heard of it, uh, Golden Sun is a great series of JRPGs and the first game was released on Game Boy Advance 3 23 years ago. So, uh, to tell you a little bit about me, I apologize for the old picture. I'm an audio programmer, I've been working in the video game industry for 12 years, mostly with, uh, with uh, AAA Studios, and now I'm a freelancer. And first, a little bit of technical context. So, the so Game Boy Advance uh, had two audio subsystems. The first one was inherited from uh, its predecessor, the original Game Boy. It consisted, it consisted in four programmable channels to make uh, what we call nowadays chip tone sounds. And the second one was something quite ingenious for an old console in 2001. It was a digital to analog converter to be able to play 8-bit BSM samples. And in terms of outputs, uh, the console had a mono built-in speaker and a stereo uh, headphone jack. So now, what was a typical workflow for a composer to write music on Game Boy Advance? Uh, this is a simple diagram, but just to give you a general idea. First, the composer would write his music in a traditional way, probably in the context of a recording studio. And then he would work with uh, uh, the game developers using dev kits and no made tool uh, to convert his music into sequences that can be read by the console. And then he would also carefully select and record audio samples from his audio gear and then compress them so they can fit in the game cartridge. Then, uh, how does the music play in game? Well, there's, there's a dedicated uh, audio engine responsible for playing the sequences, loading the samples, changing the pitch according to the sequence data, applying real-time effects, and mixing everything together. Also, because of some design flaws on the circuit board, there was often unwanted noise added to the audio output, even with headphones. So you can see here that there are multiple things that deteriorate, deteriorate the sound before it reaches your ears. So now, what is game music restoration exactly? So we want to recreate the tracks from scratch and restore them to their full quality. To do that, we need to analyze, research, and reverse engineer the console hardware and the game data. Thankfully, we don't need to rewrite the music by ear if the sequences can be extracted from the game. And the most important step is to track down the original samples before they got recordi recorded and deteriorated. So let's get right into it. First, we need to extract the data. Thankfully, people have been researching the Game Boy Advance for more than 20 years, and so there's plenty of resources available online. So GBM Use Reaper, with just one P, is a tool that can extract MIDI files and samples from a ROM file. And its creator, uh, Bregalad, studied the audio driver, that's called MP2K or SAPI, which was uh, used on most games. Uh, the source code is publicly available, so that we're going, instead of blindly using that tool, we, we want to understand what it does. Basically, the tool reads a ROM file, it locates the data offsets where the music sequences and samples are located, then uh, there's a mapping table uh, of all the sequence instructions uh, and um, all the known sequence instructions, and it converts them one by one to the equivalent in MIDI. For the samples, it extracts them and uh, puts them in inside the sound font file. And I think uh, it's interesting to see uh, how the data is converted. So um, uh, you'll see that the sequence format used on the GBA is very close to MIDI, with a few tweaks to save memory. What you see on screen is a, is a chunk of the music sequence from, extracted from a binary ROM. It has a few instructions that set uh, the key shift, tempo, current instruments, some variables related to LFO, volume, and so on. And um, then you have, we have delta time instructions, just when nothing happens uh, for a few measures. And then we have actual notes. And one interesting uh, is that the concepts of note on, note on and note off are combined inside one single instruction, which only takes three bytes instead of six bytes in MIDI. And so uh, at this stage, after running the tool for the first time, we have a set of MIDI files and a sound font. So we can use a DAW like Reaper and a plugin that reads sound fonts like um, base MIDI VST. The MIDI tracks will play just fine, and since the buffer is not going through the GBA mixer and the output speakers, the quality is already better than on the console. But we're still using poor quality 8-bit samples, so we can go further than that. What we need to do next is to restore the samples themselves. So how are we going to find the original samples? The first thing to check uh, to do is to check the video game music sources, and it's an amazing and dedicated community. So all their findings are publicly available online, and they also have a Discord server. 
And uh, when I started my journey, I found a listing for the first Gondanson game, which said that all the instruments came from a uh, Roland SC88 Pro device. And I was inspired by someone called Cyan on YouTube. Basically, she extracted the MIDI files, patched them, and played them directly on the device using its MIDI input. But then I discovered that uh, Samsung didn't come from that device at all, so it motivated me to, to push the concept further. And like for Goldenson 2, uh, on the on database, the, um, uh, the database was incomplete, but it said that the composer also used a Roland JV1080 and a specific expansion card. And uh, so most of the samples had not been identified yet, but this was uh, something to, to, to start uh, the research. I managed, I managed to get my hands on the device. Uh, I simply explored the presets one by one by pushing the buttons. And uh, that's how I found the sitar, bonang, uh, gander, balafon, and steel drums from the second game. Nowadays, know that you can also find VST versions of the devices, so it's even easier. Now I would like to share with you a few examples of restored sounds. First, uh, the bass sound, which comes from a, a preset called Picked Bass on the SC88. First is uh, the compressed sample from the GBA. <laughs> Another restored version. Oh, that's loud. That's loud. Another example, the sitar gliss used in the second game is the original compressed sample. Another restored one. So at this point, we should be able to restore the tracks themselves. We can just open the previously extracted sound font, replace the old samples with the one we recorded, and the quality will immediately improve. But we can still go further than that. Let's talk about single sample versus full patch. So in Golden Sun, there's usually one sample per instrument, and each sample is defined by a root note. Uh, in the example on screen, in the, it's C4. When you, when you want to play a note in code, you have a function uh, that calculates the frequency shift to apply, and the sound gets resampled. And this is just a basic resampling algorithm. The console was not doing any modern piece shifting that preserves the duration. On the other hand, uh, on the original hardware, you, you, you usually have multiple samples per instrument. It's just that the composer uh, had to pick one sound to record and put on the game, because again, space on the cartridge was uh, limited. But now that we found the original instrument, instead of using one single sample, what if we, we use the entire patch? So we'll demonstrate that uh, with some examples that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. First, the case of the brass FF instrument. Uh, so I hope it's going to be. I hope it's not going to be too loud. If I play a short sequence directly on the device, and now if I isolate the single sample that was used in the game and put it in the sound font VST. So the difference might not be too obvious if you're not familiar with the source material, but let me explain. On the hardware, the samples are too different. We have some high notes at the end of that uh, musical sentence, and uh, they, they have a weak sound, but on the GBA, everything is consistent. So in this situation, it, uh, it was better to stick uh, with the, the single sample that was chosen for the game. And we still improve the quality anyway, since we've restored the sample, so it's not the end of the world if we don't use a full patch. Now, another example, this time with a bright strings instrument. Uh, let's listen directly to the sequence playing of the EST88. Mm -hmm. So right away, we can hear that it works, uh, because all the samples are well balanced and consistent. So in conclusion, you'll just, uh, you'll, you'll need to decide what sounds best on a case-by-case -case basis. And now let's talk about ways to speed up our workflow to, by writing some custom tools. One of the things, uh, the first things I wanted to do was to extract meaningful data from the MIDI files and sound font. Uh, after I identified most of the samples and gave them names, I created a Python script using uh, the MIDO and SF2 file libraries. Uh, so the script passes each MIDI file, it looks at bank and program, program changes and other control change events, and it generates two CSV files. The first table is a global overview, overview for each song. It tells me which instrument it's your, uh, sorry. So, so sec uh, the second table is a global overview for each song. It tells me uh, which instruments it uses, if there are drums or synths, and, or anything I ask it to identify, like pitch and mode will. And this kind of data was very useful at the early stages when not every sample had been found. It allowed me to work on some songs and leave others for later. 
And now I mentioned earlier that you might want to send the MIDI files directly to the hardware modules. The problem is that the extracted MIDI files won't be compatible out of the box. The, the bank and program, program changes need to be rerouted to the correct presets. Uh, you might also need to split your tracks when multiple instruments share the same MIDI channel to avoid conflicts. And the volume, the volume curves, curves might uh, need some smoothing or fixes. And those are just a few examples. You could do all of that by hand, but we have 97 songs to restore, so it's easier to write a script. I was going to do it in Python, but then I wanted to manipulate tracks directly in, inside my Reaper session. So uh, I use Reaper's API rescript in, Eula, in Lua instead. And it works like this. You import a MIDI file and template project, which already contains some tracks uh, priority to the correct MIDI outputs. Then you launch the script. It reads all the MIDI instructions, copies or moves the data around, and fixes any instructions when necessary. And everything can be, um, uh, all the conversion rules are defined in a separate JSON file. Now, we're in front of one of our first major challenge. The songs use uh, synthesizers, but those weren't pre-recorded from a hardware module. The game, the game developers wanted high-quality synths, but uh, the cheap Game Boy program rules channels were too limiting, and uh, using pre-recorded samples, uh, samples wouldn't have been efficient. So instead, they act custom assembly code into the audio engine by overriding the mixing and processing routines. Uh, when a track wants to change an instrument and the target is a synth, the instruction is detected in code and the custom routines are called. Then it computes the synth waveform and sends the data to the custom mixer and the, the output buffer. The first approach to restore those synths uh, consisted in isolating individual notes and recording them separately, like in the first graph. You, you could do that by mani manually modifying a sequence uh, in a ROM file. The problem is that you'll get a lot of noise in the, in the recorded output, and also it won't give you a, a perfect implementation of the synths. Some features will be missing if you reduce, reduce it to individual recorded samples. The second approach was to reverse engineer the synths. And it was done by someone called uh, Epatix. Uh, and uh, I want to thank him for publishing his work on GitHub and also for kindly replying to my emails. So basically, he used reverse engineering tools like uh, IDA, uh, IDA, or Gaidra. And um, on the ROM file, he found the location of the assembly code that was computing the synths, and then he converted everything to readable C++ code. He turned his findings into a program uh, that he called AGB Play. It's a standalone tool that takes the GBA ROM as input. It converts the sequences, reads the, embos, the audio samples, and rather renders the audio in real time. So the, the approach is similar to what GBM use Reaper is doing, but AGB Play is more advanced, uh, and it includes several features that are specific to the GBA, like uh, the resampling algorithm, the custom LFO, custom, custom reverb, and so on. When I started the project, I was using IGB Play to render the stems so I could import them directly in my Reaper sessions. But then I had an idea. What if I could drive IGB Play like a VST? So I extracted the features that I wanted from IGB Play, like the DSP code for the synths or the resampling algorithm, and I started writing my own VST using Juice. I plugged everything to the incoming MIDI messages in the process block function. And I also created a GUI with all the parameters that I wanted to control in real time, like the ADSR, but the also the duty step or duty, uh, or duty base of the post suites since. And after that, I integrated a library uh, capable of parsing sound font files, a tiny sound font. And later, I also added the option to directly work with individual web files, uh, to directly work with, uh, with, uh, so we, with individual samples instead of uh, having to, to modify your sound font every time. My main goal with this VST was to create an alternative to traditional sound font VSTs, but also to be able to integrate features that were specific to the, the GBA audio engine. Now, I, I wanted to briefly mention a few of the challenges I had to face. One of was the drums. So in the first game, all the drum kit samples came from the SC88, but it turns out that the entire drum kit had been replaced in the second game. And you know what? Some of the sounds have never been identified even to this day. And several people managed to track down a few of them on the Alessis DM5, which was one of uh, Motoi Sakuraba, the composer, uh, drum models at the time. But really enough, it didn't contain all the sounds. A lot of them were still missing. So I was about to, to give up, and uh, my temporary solution was to simply denoise the extracted samples manually. But then I, uh, I, someone mentioned to me that the GS2 drum kit had been, had been reused in other games, and some of them were on GameCube. So here I followed a different route. I, um, I extracted the samples from, the, from a game called uh, Mario Tennis Toad's Toad Tour, and I was amazed to find that all the samples that I needed was there in 16-bit 16, 16 quality instead of 8-bit. It was just incredible. 
so here's a quick example of restored drum. Uh, drum. So the right symbol, uh, first the extracted version from the GBA. And now from the GameCube. Another interesting thing was uh, the, the LFO. It turns out that the GBA had a custom LFO with pitch bending based on the, the song BPM, and there was no way to achieve uh, that kind of result with existing sound from VST. So instead, I simply added the algorithm to my own VST. And uh, one last thing, I, I found out that some samples had been altered in post-production before they were put in the game. You can see uh, on the example on screen, uh, the steel drums, that the tail of the recording has been altered to make it look better. So sometimes re restoring the samples is not enough. You also need to identify and reproduce those alterations. And now we come to the final mix. Uh, I rendered each instrument track separately. Some of them were recorded directly out of the hardware modules, and uh, the others were, re were rendered uh, with the VST. Then I carefully adjusted the volume, spanning, reverb, and so on. And before we wrap this up, uh, I would like to share with you two short examples of restored tracks. First, this one is called Drums of Dela, is uh, the one uh, from the GBA. <laughs> Now the restored version. This might not be too obvious to if you're with those speakers, but if you listen to the presentation with headphones, you might hear it. Another track, uh, the boss battle from the second game. First, the original version. the restored version. So I hope you enjoyed this little introduction to music restoration. Of course, I couldn't uh, give you all the details of the VST implementation. I had to keep a few. Uh, uh, I had to skip a few steps of the workflow. But um, I just uh, my goal was to show you that it's a very interesting topic, and uh, I, I like to compare it to archaeology. There's always something new to to learn, new tools to try. And um, and by the way, I wanted to clarify that I'm not affiliated with Nintendo or or Roland. This was just a personal project that I did for fun. And uh, if you enjoy the talk, uh, please feel free to visit my YouTube channel. Uh, you'll find the entirety of the Restored Golden Sun soundtrack. And I also have a GitHub with uh, all the source code. And uh, when I sh what I showed you was specific to the Game Boy Advance, but of course you can apply those principles uh, to other game consoles. And there are two content creators that I can recommend on YouTube if you're interested. Mathieu Valente and uh, Janine Sam Miller. Both are incredibly, uh, incredibly talented and their workflow is different than mine, but I learned a lot from uh, their videos. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>